and I want to make three main points. Three main points, and then I'll wrap up. The first point I want to make is that despite the difficult times in which we live, the Ghanaian economy is expanding and creating opportunities. And I'll take time to explain that. Despite the difficult times in which we live today, the Ghanaian economy is expanding and creating opportunities. It is true that times are hard. Anybody who tells you that times are not hard is not telling you the truth. Times are hard in Ghana, in Nigeria, in South Africa, in the UK. This week in the US, for the first time, the US Army is flying around the world for baby formula, infant formula, baby food to fly into the US. Why? Because they are short of baby food in the US. In the US, one of the conversations they are having is that for the first time in so many decades, inflation has reached where it had never reached before. In the UK, they are having a similar conversation that inflation has reached where it has never reached before, I think in about 40 years. In Ghana, inflation today is at 23.6% or so. It has never been this high in 18 years. There are parts of the world that today, if you went to the market to buy oil, cooking oil, you will not be allowed to buy more than one gallon because they are afraid they are running into shortage. There are fears that very soon it may be difficult to find bread on the markets in parts of Africa because wheat, a good chunk of the wheat that is exported around the world, no longer be exported because of some issues around the Black Sea area, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, fuel prices are going up, so transport fares are going up. Once transport fares go up, it affects food prices. Once food prices start going up, everybody else starts increasing their prices. The combination of this has made times hard, that's true. But despite the fact that times are hard, the Ghanaian economy is still expanding and it's creating a lot of opportunity for those who can spot the opportunities and take advantage of it. Last year, Ghana's economy grew. While everybody's economy was still struggling, Ghana's economy grew by about, I think about 5.4%. Do you know where the bulk of that growth came from? Do you know where it came from? Agriculture. One of the things that a lot of people are planting and is getting a lot of export into West Africa it's, uh, and other places is maize. A bro. And my second point I want to make is that there's a lot of expansion in the public sector. How many of you have started noticing that now the government announces that we want to recruit more people into police, immigration, fire, and all of that. And now you see a lot of people who are showing up at the stadiums, etc., hoping to be recruited. Have you noticed that? It is a sign that gradually the public sector is expanding. And what used to happen at first, where we had a freeze in public sector recruitment, is now turning around. And gradually, some young people are getting jobs in the public sector. Has everybody gotten a job? No. Can everybody be recruited there? Obviously, that cannot be the case. But at least you are beginning to see an expansion in the public sector. Few teachers here, nurses here, soldiers here, police here, gradually the numbers are going there. If there were one million of us who were at home, and even 100,000 of us get an opportunity, we are no longer one million. Of course, there are more who are graduating, like you, who are coming in to look for jobs, and so those numbers will go up. But gradually, the sector is expanding. A bigger space for the majority of us is in the private sector. That's my third point, and that's where I want to focus on. You know, the Ghanaian economy, the Ghanaian people, traditionally we were all entrepreneurs. People who move from part of the country to other parts of the country to acquire land and farm huge hectares of cocoa farms. So in those days, they would say, oh, the wealthiest were our farmers. 
and then those who got involved in trade. In fact, if you study the history of uh, Ghana's political independence, the people who supported the fight for independence were the farmers and the traders. You would notice that they were those who had capital to be able to support the fight for independence. The Ghanaian economy was an entrepreneurial economy. If you go to part of the country, to the Kou areas, you go to the areas where cocoa is grown, you go to the coastline, you will find that the Ghanaian economy was an entrepreneurial economy. Traditionally, what we were doing is that we either go to the sea or go to the farm and produce so that we could get people to buy, and that's how wealth was created. In 1844, when we signed the bond of 1844, and the colonial government started its, uh, may I say, operations. Then we started something we called Abai Ejuma, public sector work. So gradually, over the years, many of us have sought to get involved in Abai Ejuma. And our entrepreneurial spirit, our entrepreneurial abilities have been dwindling. Well, I have news for you. What the state believes in is that we should reinvest in our entrepreneurial ability so that the private sector can do what? Expand some more. Expand some more, create some more jobs, make some more incomes of jobs and incomes. What do they do? They improve their quality of lives. And so we are trying to encourage as many young people as possible to go into entrepreneurship. And it's part of what we've been talking about here today, even before I came. Entrepreneurship has five pillars that I want to leave you with. Under my point number three, five pillars that I want to leave you with. And I quickly want to hit on them so that if you forget anything at all, don't forget these five pillars of entrepreneurship. Number one is value. Value. And it's a simple question. What value do you create for us as a society, as a community? What problem are you solving for us? What opportunity are you helping us to take advantage of? Because it is when you're able to create some value for us, solve some problem for us, help us to take advantage of some opportunity for us, that will do what? We'll pay you for it. So sometimes we will carry all the books that we are studying, Adam Smith and somebody else, all the economists in the world. And a woman who probably has not been schooled realizes that when these 25 young people come and sit here and study, they need water to drink. True or false? They need lunch. So I have not studied economics, but I know that they need water, they need food. So while they carry all the books for Adam Smith and come to read, I'm going to provide them with what? Water and food. At the end of the day, you will probably be spending and she will be making what? money she's providing value she's solving a certain problem she's answering a certain question there so i ask you for many of us who are going through all of this academic exercise what value can you see around us that you can create and get paid for so the first pillar which we used to do before 1844 which is gradually going down which i want to remind you about this morning is value what question are you answering for us? What solution are you providing around us to the many issues around us? If you can do that, it doesn't matter how rich or poor a background you come from, how educated or uneducated you are, whether you are Christian, Muslim, Fanti, or you are Hindu or Ga. It doesn't matter. Once you can solve a problem for us, once you can help us take advantage of something for a reward, once you can answer a question that we collectively have, that we come to class and we need water to drink, and you have figured out that if you bring a nice chest of water, at the end of the day, you will make an extra 10 CDs for today. Once you can figure that out and begin to create that value, that's 50 CDs a week. That is 200 CDs a month. And maybe if you could create some more value, it will no longer be 200 CDs, it will probably be 2,000 CDs a month. So instead of being the one who is spending, you are the one who is doing what? Who is earning. The second thing after identifying what value that you create is, I come across a lot of young people who say, I have a business idea. I want money to 
go and do it. But the banks don't want to give me money. Have you heard that story before? You see, Ghanaian banks, they take my deposit, my small deposit. Then they put an ATM machine and give me a card. When I need the money, I can go and check it out tomorrow morning. So if you go there that you want 20,000 CDs as capital for your business, it will not be fair to their business model for them to give you my small savings, which I'll go to the ATM card tomorrow, to the ATM machine tomorrow with. Because possibly, by the time I go, the money is with you and you are doing your business and you are having problems, maybe. And the bank will be in trouble. So Ghanaian banks will not be able to give you capital for your business. One of the stages many of us miss in business is what I call the proof of concept stage. So you have an idea. How are you proving to us that that idea works? Because not everything you think actually works. My first business I did, I used to print writing pad, scarf, and polo shirts for my classmates in Pope John Senior High School. Proof of concept that, because we are going to Ntako, when you print the scarf, the way the boys will buy, the way the girls from some of the nice schools want to get a Pujoba scarf and go and show a Pujoba. So I'll get a good market there. But it's a proof of concept. One day, I needed a photograph taken. And I said, can we get somebody to take a photo? They said, there's one national service person here. He likes taking photographs. He had identified the value that he creates. And he had been proving his concept. So people... I said, find him for me. He came with some puppetry camera like that. He said, Say, sit down. I sat down. He took the photo, bam, like that. Very good photo. Later, when the photo went for what they were looking for, a lot of people were like, oh, but this photo is very good. Which studio did you do? Which studio did you do? I said, it's not a studio. It's a national service boy around here who did it for me. Where is that guy? So they found him for me. I said, tell me about yourself. He studied banking or finance in school. Nothing to do with photography, but he identified that his, his, his area of skill was photography and he had been proving the concept. So, you're doing very well. So, what would you like to do with it after your service? He said, well, I'd like to open a photography company. So, maybe, boss, don't pay me salary. Buy me a camera of and I can use the camera to take your photos and weekends I can go and do photo shoots for weddings and other things like that. I said, you're really a young man. I will invest in your business. Supported him, he built his little business. And he, uh, today, if you see any photo of me going, or any video of me, it is him and his company, and his team, they are doing it. <laughs> they chose their value, they proved their concept, they put themselves in a position where I could believe in them and invest in them. That's point number three. It is when point number three has been finished, somebody has invested that 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, and so the business is rolling, that you are now ready to do what we call scaling up. That is where you have a story now to go to a financial institution and show them that three years ago, this is what we started, and we proved our concept. And Mami Kwame Manse's son and this one's daughter and my, 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 my woman fellowship leader and one of my supervisors in the office put together some 15,000 to invest in us and this is where we are. And now we are looking for 120,000 cities to scale up and get to the next level. That is when institutions will begin to believe in you and put in you and scale up to the next level. So scaling up is necessary but comes after the first three things have happened. Value, proof of concept and investment. And then the very last point. One of the problems with Ghanaian businesses is that when the entrepreneur dies, the business does what? It dies. The reason very often is that a lot of Ghanaian entrepreneurs don't build institutions out of their business, institutionalize the business, so that even when you are not there, some people have been empowered to take a decision and act. The business still goes on. When you travel out of the country, the business is an institution and can function. And so if God blesses you when you get to that point, please never forget that. Encourage yourself to build an institution out of it so that even when you are not there, you can sit home and the business will still run and make profit and bring you some of the profit at home for you to chop small. The Barclays brothers who started Barclays, they are no longer involved in it, but the institution is running. Some of the best institutions around the world, they are still running today because the people who started it chose to institutionalize it, build systems and processes that work 
regardless of they as individuals. And so, Honorable Member of Parliament, if you invited me here today, my simple submission has been to my colleagues, the point number one, that times are hard globally, but the Ghanaian economy is expanding gradually. It is those who are able to look out for the opportunities here in these difficult times who make it out of these difficult times. Number two, the public sector is expanding and creating some more jobs. But not all of us will get space in the public sector. God bless you if you get space in the public sector. Try and put yourself in a space where you will be recruitable for the public sector. But number three, even if you don't get space in the public sector, there's more space where in the private sector. And to execute and succeed in the private sector, I've been sharing with you five quick principles of entrepreneurship. Value. What value do you create? We are all carrying our meat books to go and learn, but we we'll drink water. Can you identify that value and create that value for it? What problem do you solve for the community? Can you identify it and solve it and get paid for it? Proof of concept. When you have thought about that thing, how are you proving that concept and showing to us that this idea that you have, it actually works? Investment. How are you putting yourself in a position where somebody knows you? and believes in you because of what you have demonstrated around. I want to encourage you to institutionalize, build an institution out of this idea, out of this business, so that even when you are not there, that business will continue and will help us to employ a lot more people out there. I wish you all the best. God bless you.